Okay, uh, let's uh, take, a, uh, take a look at the uh, final project requirements. Right, so this is, this is a project uh, that you have to complete by the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the end of the semester. Um, typically, it'll be, they'll be due the uh, week before uh, grades are due. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure why, but the, uh, the due dates of the uh, graduate and undergraduate are different. Uh, I'm not sure why. It's uh, almost a week before. So I have to have grades in for the undergrads almost a week before the graduate folks. Um, so uh, um, your, your, your project would have to be due the week, a week, almost a week before than the, than the graduate folks. Uh, so that's also one of the reasons we will we'll, uh, we'll remove some of the requirements from the project, uh, that, uh, also some requirements from the assignments to give you, you know, a little more uh, leeway and be able to uh, complete this on time, okay? Um, uh, so yeah, so, so I'm not sure why they do that, the, uh, the differences. Uh, all right, so the, the project. So these are, these are very generic uh, requirements. Uh, the intent is that uh, you can choose uh, to work on anything you want, right? The topic, the domain of what you want to work on is up to you, right? So we're not gonna, uh, you know, we're not gonna say no on, on you know, whatever. Uh, uh, well, uh, you keep it clean, um, and uh, but you know, basically you can you can decide whatever you want to you want to work on. Uh, you don't need to ask for permission, right? As long as you're within these uh, 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 these requirements, you're free to do whatever you want, okay? Uh, so the, what, what, we're, what we're giving you as a requirement as, is uh, some, some general uh, uh, guidelines on what kind of complexity are we looking for, right? How, you know, uh, how difficult, uh, how challenging we want it uh, to be for, for everyone. So, uh, so there has to be some, uh, some homepage, yes? A landing page, somewhere where I, uh, it introduces to me what, what it is that it, what is your application about, uh, it should, uh, one of the, it should look spectacular, right? Whatever that means. Um, but uh, it, you know it when you see it, right? That this is, wow, this is very polished work, okay? Uh, uh, it should have, it should be aware of who's logged in, right? Or if, if anybody's logged in, right? So, so if nobody's logged in, then it should show some generic content, okay? But if somebody is logged in, it should show information that is pertaining to that particular person, right? Uh, or, or knowing something about you. If I don't know anything about you, then I just display some generic content. But if I know it's you, then uh, I, sh I should be able to display something uh, specific to you. Maybe it's the, uh, you know, it's the last person who joined, you know, oh, welcome, whatever, uh, somebody who just joined. Uh, or the last review that somebody published, or or the last, the last review that you published, right? Or the last movie that you liked, or the last uh, soccer game that you watched, or the whatever, whatever that it pertains to you, right? should be shown here in the homepage. You know, something about yourself. If, uh, if, if nobody's logged in, uh, or somebody cleared out the cookies, then we should show some, uh, some generic content, but it should be dynamic, right? It should, should be something about somebody having created something on the website. But since I don't know who you are, right, it, it, you know, if I display one content versus another, it's the same, right? There's nothing particular to you. Oh, so yeah, so the home page. Um, right, so then, then there should be a profile page, uh, a page where once I log in, right, I can go in, it, there's a, some, there might be some private information in there uh, about me uh, that only I have access to. Uh, there might be some public uh, profile information about me, right? And uh, uh, so there, that, that I might share with others, right? So may, maybe my username I might share. Uh, and, and how much do you, uh, do you consider sharing? Uh, at least the username should be shareable or viewable to other folks, right? Uh, perhaps even a thumbnail, right, of, of, of you know, the person's uh, avatar or whatnot, okay? So those two things should be shareable or viewable by other folks, right? How much you want to be able to, that's up to you, right? If you consider, uh, there should be some portions uh, that are private, right? Uh, so there should be always something private, there should always be something public, right? What, what those things are, uh, that's up to you. Um, so that means that I should be able to visit somebody else's profile, okay? 
And, uh, and depending on our relationship, uh, I will be either see something that is comp uh, only the public part, right? maybe just only the username and the avatar. That's all I see. Right? Because maybe we don't have any relationship. Uh, but if, if I'm following you or maybe you're following me, maybe I should be able to see other things than just your username. And, and uh, uh, maybe I can see uh, your, your albums or your pictures or whatever, right? Or, uh, uh, things that you've posted, or blogs, or re reviews, or movies that you liked, or things like that, right? I should be able to see. Uh, um, also, uh, the profile should contain uh, links to things that are related to me, right? So, so if I if I go into my profile, I should be able to see uh, maybe links to all the movies that I like, all the people that I'm following, folks that are following me, uh, listed somehow. Right, or access from my profile, right, so that maybe I can go and, and view all the products that I liked, uh, all, the per all the products that I've purchased, all the products that I've sold, uh, all the events I've gone to, all the whatever, all, the, all my favorite sports, uh, sports teams, or my favorite recipes, or wh whatever it is that your domain is. Right? Uh, if there's something related to me, I should be able to access it from my profile. Okay? Right? Either content that I've generated, or content that other folks have generated uh, about me. Right? If somebody has tagged me, or somebody has followed me, or somebody has liked me, I should, you know, if I'm related to something, I should be able to see it here. Uh, also, there should be a uh, form of search. Right? Um, uh, so the, 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 data you, you might, uh, the data that you're searching is either uh, data that uh, has been generated uh, within your community, right? or it might be uh, and or uh, uh, data that uh, is being searched on a third-party API, right? Uh, so whether you're hitting uh, Amazon.com or um, uh, you're hitting Yelp or or Yumly or uh, whatever, whatever API you you uh, you you decide to use, uh, you should be able to search that API, right? Provide some uh, some criteria and it returns some. Uh, sum summary data objects, right? That allows you to display some uh, some grid or some list or some table information about uh, your search criteria. Yes, right. Uh, and and the data that uh, if the data comes from the remote API, you might augment it with some data that you have locally. Uh, if you search a movie uh, and uh, and it displays movies, and if one of them is a movie that is my favorite list, it should show. Right, that uh, I've th you know I've given a thumbs up or, or or started or whatever, right? So it's a it's kind of like a merge of remote data, right, with data that I might have in my local database. Yes, uh, so it, it, it's a merge of two two data sources. Um, uh, if I if I click on any one element, I should see details about that element, right? My 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 recipe. Uh, maybe the, the the search results only listed the name of the recipe. Right, it may be a picture of it, perhaps. Right, if I click on it, uh, I should be able to see detail, more details. There may be more pictures. Uh, maybe the the the, rest, the whole recipe, the steps to co to complete it. Right, all the ingredients and whatnot. Yes. Uh, so the, de the so there should be a details page. All right. Now that details page might be also a merge of remote data plus some local data in our database. Right. Uh, for instance, the remote data might contain. Uh, all the base data, right? All, you know, all the pictures, uh, all the ingredients, all the the, the steps to 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 to, uh, to cook this, uh, which typically I don't, I, I won't have access to modify. I can't modify. I have read-only access from a remote API. Yes, right. but if somebody in my, our community has liked it, or if anybody has reviewed the recipe, right, we might show those those reviews at the bottom of the page. So the top page might show uh, the details about that are stored in a remote database, right? Somebody else's information, but merge at the bottom with reviews of our community that is using our application. Make sense? So it's kind of like, like a, again, it's a it's a mash, it's a mashup of remote data with local data. Yes? Okay. Uh, so yeah, so that's the search and results and the details page. Uh, there has to be a login and registration page, right? Being able to join uh, the community. Um, and this, this uh, uh, so so you should be able to remember that it's me uh, for at least 30 minutes, right? So if, uh, so a lot of some of these pages will be uh, um, 
uh, protected pages, like, like my, my profile. I should only be, only if I log in, I should be able to see my profile. Right? Anybody else would see maybe a very summary of my profile, only, only what's public, perhaps. Yes? Uh, so, so login and registration should you, you, uh, implement um, uh, uh, user management, right? If, uh, and, or session management of knowing that uh, I am logged in, who I am, identity, right? Uh, styling, so it has to be responsive, right? So the TAs will, will look at your application on a phone. Right, so it should still be usable on a phone, right? In landscape and portrait mode, right? Um, things that should not overlap uh, or, or, or occlude other things, right? Uh, that this, this should maintain some borders around, uh, use you know, good white spaces, uh, use of white spaces and uh, whatnot. Uh, use, uh, you're welcome to use a, uh, a library uh, like Bootstrap um, uh, uh, or, or foundation or, or any of these uh, other libraries. Uh, don't use one of these style sheets that you can purchase online and you know, the, your website looks spectacular all of a sudden, right? Yeah, don't do that. That is not acceptable. Right? You can use you know, f f uh, foundation and these, these libraries are, are developed for developers, right? They're, they're, they're uh, not for designers, right? for developers. They have widgets and all sorts of things that might uh, make it easy to look professional, but just don't take over the entire screen. Right? They, they, they allow you to apply it moderately. Uh, make sure that you use you know, good use of white spaces, padding, margins, justification, wrapping. You know, that if things are wrapping, make sure that you meant it to wrap. Right? That it's not wrapping because it's an un unintentional wrapping. Right? Or that things wrap wrong and push content down right? and you don't, you don't see the content anymore right? because it's, it's so pushed down. Or, or sometimes it, it occludes, you know, when it wraps, it, it, it's in front of things that they shouldn't be in front of. Right? So you make sure that, uh, that you're always looking at these things. Right? Uh, look and feel, uh, you know, make sure that, that uh, it's, it looks polished, that it looks professional, right? That, uh, that you really worked on this, right? That, you, that you're, you're, uh, uh, that you'd be, you'd be uh, that okay with you know, bragging or putting this in your, in your resume uh, to, your, uh, to your employer, right? You know, look what I built. Um, so so we'll, we're going to be using an architecture, a, a model view controller architecture throughout. Uh, the course, right? So uh, that imposes uh, the you know, certain certain decisions on how to structure the application, right? And what are the roles of each artifact? You know, every file that you open or you create has a role to play, right? And uh, in an architecture, right? so make sure that you follow the guidelines of uh, of the architecture that we're going to be uh, introducing and working throughout the entire class. Um, uh, certainly, we're going to be all working on dynamic content loading. We're not going to be using uh, server-side uh, rendering, so no, no, no PHP or Python or uh, JSPs or ASPs. Right? Those are all server-side rendering uh, uh, technologies. Instead, we're going to be doing all client-side rendering technologies, right? So React, Angular. Uh, so yeah, so all dynamic content uh, controllers uh, handling uh, user events. Um, uh, 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 dispatching it to a, uh, who's going to handle that event, uh, doing some data, data uh, transformation, uh, you know, invoking uh, services uh, all through the, uh, through the controller, web service clients, you know, so all data access to remote services, remote uh, RESTful APIs uh, have to be encapsulated in a reusable uh, modular a, um, a singleton uh, class that allows you to uh, um, I have a single point of, uh, of maintenance uh, accessing data. Uh, also, the file structure, make sure that you follow the file structure that we are, are, are suggesting. Uh, search requirements, I think we talked about that already. Right, you should be able to search. Uh, user management, so, right, so the, uh, the, the, there, there has to be a, a system administrator who's, who can uh, manage users, right? Create users, remove users, uh, update users, right? Change their roles, perhaps. Yes? Uh, so, and that's, we're going to be working on it in the fir this first assignment anyway. Uh, log in, you need to be able to log in and ident identify yourself. Um, uh, also, um, there has to be a, uh, supporting a, an anonymous user. If, if somebody doesn't log in, they should still uh, be able to use a lot of your application. Right? A lot of it should be available to anybody, even if they're not logged in. Okay? 
they should be able to search for movies, right, and look at the reviews and, and look at uh, uh, what other folks are saying, right, without having to log in. Right? Maybe, maybe they, they click on a, on a user and they can see all the reviews from, from that user. Okay? Uh, only when uh, a, a, we need to know anything about that particular user, then we need to challenge them and, and ask them to log in. Right? If, they, if they want to review a movie or like something or give it a star or whatever, we need, we need to know who they are. Right? So then we would challenge them with a login. Okay? And only then. Uh, or if they are accessing something that you think it's private or, uh, or sensitive information, then we, we ask them to log in. Uh, profile, I think we talked about that. Uh, user roles. So, uh, so you have to uh, identify at least two uh, human roles. Right? Uh, like, for instance, in our, in our assignment, uh, we have the faculty and the student. Uh, so those are, those are two distinct human roles. Right? And, uh, and, and their use cases should be uh, distinct. Okay? Uh, there are things that the faculty can do that the student can't do. Right? And there are things that the student can't do that the faculty can also do. Wait a minute. Uh, so, so there are roles that, uh, that have distinct user interfaces right? that allow them to accomplish their particular use cases. Yes? And, uh, and as a faculty, you know, I'll, I'll spend mo most of my time you know, authoring and grading and, and uh, you know, adding content and changing things and changing dates and schedules and whatnot, yes? Uh, as a student, I'm not going to do those things, right? I'm going to mostly consume, consume that content, uh, and I'll be submitting assignments, and I'll be taking quizzes and whatnot, yes? So the, uh, the user interfaces are very distinct. Okay? There, there'll be some overlap. You know, we both can register. We both can log in. We both have a profile, maybe, yes? Uh, there's that, you know, but the overlap should be minimal. Right? Most of the user interface should be very distinct. Okay? So uh, you are required to identify two human users. Okay? Um, you know, you might, there might be a seller and a, and a buyer. There might be in a restaurant, there might be a cook, a waiter, a delivery boy, you know, a, a receptionist. There might be a manager, an owner. Uh, for sports, there might be a player, a coach, a director, a span, a, a, a spectator, whatnot. You know? Um, you know, students, faculty, staff, uh, and uh, if I log in as, as, as one person, if I register as that one person, then all my user interface is based on that role. Right? If I log in as someone else in a different role, my user interface will be distinct, different. Right? Uh, uh, the admin role, the admin, so the admin role, uh, all right, I already talked about uh, uh, they, they can manage users, obviously. They can CRUD users. They can create, read, update, and delete users. Right? And they can create CRUD at least one domain object. At least one domain object. What's a domain object? Uh, so a domain object is a, um, uh, any, any particular da data that you are capturing about your particular domain, about your, whatever topic you chose. Yes? If it's a, if it's a food, uh, then, then a, um, an ingredient might be a domain object. Right? A recipe might be a domain object. Okay? Um, if it's, a, if it's a, a, you know, movie reviews, then a movie is a domain object. So the so whatever domain you might be you might have multiple domain objects yes uh, so the the, um, uh, the the system administrator needs to be able to manipulate at least one domain object yes. Uh, well, they can crud their domain objects. So, for instance, if I, if I like a movie, I can like it, I can unlike it, I can write a review about it, right? I can't change its title, perhaps. Right, uh, I can't remove it. Right. Uh, the domain object that you've created, yes. Yeah. Uh, now, some things might be uh, might make no sense. Like, for instance, uh, if I like a movie and it's the very first time that anybody has ever liked this movie in my community, uh, the database will make an insert and in create this this movie. Uh, but nobody should be able to be able to remove that record, other than the admin, right? Okay, even though the, the person didn't create it, right? Uh, they, 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 they only said that I liked the movie, 
uh, and that caused the, the insert of that movie into the database, yes? Uh, so even though they created the movie, they're, they can't remove it or delete it, right? Uh, they, they, so basically what they've created basically is not the actual uh, object, they've created a relationship between an object that was not there, should have been there, uh, but now it's there, uh, and they create a relationship between themselves and the, and the movie. They should be able to crud that relationship. I like the movie, they create a relationship. I don't like the movie anymore, they should be able to remove that relationship. So that's the second part. The, um, uh, the, user, the uh, system administrator should be able to manipulate at least one relationship, right? At least one domain object, at least one relationship, and, and users, right? So a, a relationship might be, a, um, I, again, I, I like something, I'm following somebody, uh, I sent a message to somebody, uh, I am somebody else's manager, Right, those are all relationships right, between, between uh, different objects, yes? Uh, so the system administrator should be a, able to manipulate at least one of those relationships. Uh, anonymous user, again, uh, you should, uh, anonymous user should be able to make use of most of the application, uh, but up until they, you know, they, they uh, need to interact with, the, with this, uh, any data, they, then they, we need to uh, log them in. Uh, end user roles. Um, okay, the end user roles are the two human roles that, that I mentioned. So seller uh, can crud products, stores, they can create a product, they can create a store, they can create orders, right? Uh, a buyer, uh, they can search for products, they can add to a shopping list, right? They can do a checkout, they can view their orders. In your university, uh, faculties can crud uh, courses, they can create uh, sections, assignments, quizzes, right? Uh, whereas a student can search for courses, they can register for sections, they can take quizzes, they can submit assignments. So in order to have very distinct use cases, yes? Uh, and the user interfaces that go along with it, yes? Uh, at, okay, so roles, all right. So this, this um, so we're actually just gonna be right here. <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's uh, I'd like everybody to just be in groups of three, right? Teams of three, especially because it's, uh, it's summer, it's very short, the semester is extremely short, uh, and grading is gonna be a very big challenge this semester, okay? Uh, so that's why I'm gonna please ask you to all be part of a team of three, okay? Uh, so normally I would ask you that, uh, you know, you can just be all by yourself, right? Up to three, okay? Uh, oh, wait a minute, so we're here, sorry. <laughs> we're here. Uh, so yeah, so the, depending on the size of the team, uh, typically, the, the, it should be measure the, 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 the complexity of the application should also grow, right? Uh, so, so uh, um, if you're an undergrad, uh, you have to think of several roles, right? Okay, this is summer. This is summer, so that's going to be challenging. I think I'm going to reduce some of these uh, requirements. Yeah, I'm going to reduce these requirements. Uh, if, if, if this were uh, fall or spring, uh, I think this, this, this would make sense, but uh, in the summer it's just way, way too fast. Uh, so anyway, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll make this um, maybe an, just a one additional role, and maybe just an additional role for the, for the graduates, two additional roles and one additional role for the, for the undergrads. Uh, meaning two, two roles, faculty and student, uh, and then one additional role, right, because it's, you have an additional uh, member, team member. Uh, so just ma to make it a little more challenging uh, for, because there's three people working on this. Uh, so it'll be maybe a, a, a faculty, a student, and maybe a registrar, somebody at the registrars or staff uh, at, the, uh, at the college, right, that uh, can look at your enrollments, right, and, uh, and, and help you enroll, or some advisor. Right? Some advisor can also be a, a role. Uh, also the domain, the domain objects is, is gonna grow, right? Uh, typically it's just only two domain objects. Yes? Uh, so maybe like a playlist and a song, right? Or maybe a, a movie and a library of movies. Yes, those are two domain objects. Uh, so you need to think about a couple more domain objects, right, of your choice. Right? Think about your own domain objects. Uh, the data needs to be exposed as a RESTful service, uh, meaning uh, I can hit a network and I can see the data at an endpoint, a RESTful endpoint, and we'll, know how to, we'll learn how to do that. 
so that uh, somebody can uh, hit, hit your, uh, I mean, we're going to be using somebody else's endpoints, but we're going to go to uh, Amazon or, or, uh, or Yelp, and we're going to ask for uh, places around us, right? And, and Yelp is going to respond to us with a, you know, this big array of objects in JSON format. Yes? So we're going to learn how to do that. We're going to, ourselves are going to expose our data as a JSON object. Uh, so yeah, so all your data should be exposed as uh, web service endpoints. Uh, data requirements, actually, you can uh, use Mongoose. Uh, I'm going to change this. You can also use MySQL if you prefer. If you prefer to use MySQL, uh, that's OK. You can use MySQL instead. Uh, let's see, data schema, data models. Um, uh, first, let me look at uh, talk about the domain, domain models. Uh, you need to be able to. Uh, represent a user, right? So you need to capture uh, user information, right? So username, password, first name, last name. So you need to capture that. Uh, you need to capture whatever domain object. So if it's a movie, you need to capture movies or uh, libraries or songs or uh, recipes or teams or whatever. Um, relationships. You need to uh, uh, capture at least one user to user relationship. Right, maybe somebody follows somebody, right? So somebody's followed by somebody else. So somebody's a ma somebody's manager, right? Or somebody bookmarks some other user. Those are relationships between a user and a user. Yes. So you need to capture some relationship between a user. You need to capture at least one user to domain object. Right? I like this movie. Right? That's a that's a relationship between a user, a human user, and a domain object. Okay. So at least one of those. I, I like this movie. I um, uh, I create a I create a uh, I, I reviewed uh, this restaurant. Right. I really like this recipe. Uh, those are a user to domain relationship. Also a domain to domain relationship. Okay. Like for instance, a playlist is a domain object that contains many songs. Right. That's a relationship between a domain object and another domain object. Yes. Okay, a, uh, a playlist can contain many, many songs. Uh, also, you need a one-to-many, at least one one-to-many relationship, okay, where uh, you might have um, a, a faculty teaches many, many courses. Right? That's a one-to-many. Right? A, a student, uh, well, not so many, to, uh, at least also at least one many-to-many -many relationship. Like a student enrolls in a, in a section, yes? Uh, well, that's a many-to-many, -many, right? A, a student enrolls in a section, but a section can have many students enrolled in it, yes? So that's a many-to-many. -many. At least one many-to-many, -many. okay? Uh, here's some generic, uh, some generic U, uh, uh, UML class diagrams uh, that kind of captures everything. Uh, this is very, very generic, okay? Extreme. So don't use this uh, for your own uh, UML diagram. Uh, it's just capturing a very generic. Uh, so here's a uh, here's a user having a one-to-many relationship. Actually, that's a many-to-many, -many, right? A many-to-many -many, uh, with other users. Many like a user follows another user, so that's a many-to-many. -many. Uh, here's a one-to-many a, a self-reference. I, I don't think that's a requirement. Uh, so you can use this for creating hierarchical, uh, like uh, you know, somebody manages other users. You can create a hierarchy. Right, of people with the managers, and they have managers, and they have managers all the way up to the CEO. Right, so that, that allows you to do that. Uh, one inheritance, yeah. So a, a special case of a user. Uh, here's a here's a here's a many to many between a, a user and a domain object. Uh, many like a likes, a reviews. Right, here's a domain object with a many to many with another domain object. Uh, here's an inheritance. Uh, here's a one to many between a user and a domain object. So, and here's some specific examples. Uh, uh, here's using, uh, oh yeah, the same thing. Uh, these are these are wicked small. I don't know if you can see that. That's a a, a a person, buyer, and a seller. And they, here's a many-to-many -many between a buyer and a seller. Uh, here's a buyer following other buyers. Here's a buyer reviewing many products. Here's a seller creating many stores, and each store having many products. Uh, so take a look at those. 
uh, you need to use an external web API. So choose an external web API, Yelp, Amazon, Best Buy. Uh, there's tons of them out there. Um, I would start choosing now, because many of those REST APIs uh, um, require that you apply right, uh, to them. Right? You have to apply, provide a uh, contact information. They provide you with a, with a key. Right, so you can access the remote API, yes. Um, that might take you know, one hour. It might take a week right, for them to get back to you. Right? Uh, so the earlier you do that, the better. And, and start you know, reading their documentation and getting, starting to get, to get familiar with, uh, uh, with the API. We'll be using an API here and to show you how to use that. All right, that's it. Let's see. Um, that's the project. Uh, any questions? Nope. Okay. All right. Yes. So is there an option for mixing between the address and the address for the project? Uh, mixing. Uh, right. Yes. Right. Very good. Thanks you for catching that. Yes. I need I need graduate folks to meet, mix only with graduates and undergrads with undergrads. Yes. Right now. Right away. <laughs> Yes. The the uh, the first the first part will be to uh, you know create a description, right? We'll we'll ask you to um, to identify the users, right? Wh who's your audience? Uh, identify and describe the problem you're trying to solve. Uh, for each user, we'll ask you to provide use cases. You know, what are they going to use your application for, right? What are things typical things that they'll be you doing in your application? Uh, make sure that they're distinct for each user. Uh, also describe what kind of domain objects uh, you're going to be capturing information about, right? So, so we get you started thinking about, right? And I think it's due next Thursday. I think it's uh, that description. We'll talk about it a little further. Anything else? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. No. ES6 definitely. Yep. All right.